Should this movie really be called Cap and Friends? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Price of freedom is high. And it's a price I'm willing to pay. You told me not to trust anyone. This is how it ends. Everything goes. Looks like you're giving the orders now, Captain. I am right. Today, Marvel Studios doesn't really care why you see this movie, just that you do. That's why they've thrown multiple elements into the mix. Black Widow, the introduction of Sam Wilson, aka Falcon, potential new villain or is that anti-hero, the Winter Soldier, and of course, S.H.I.E.L.D. In fact, there are so many wild cards in this film, many have gone completely unnoticed so far. Few have noted that behind the camera are the Russo brothers, who previously helmed Welcome to Collinwood and You, Me, and Dupree. Revenge's Emily Van Camp barely registered. She just recently got a character poster mere weeks before the film's release. And while Robert Redford got his poster a little earlier, not many people have looked at it. Apparently, he doesn't rock a suit quite like Agent Coulson. Speaking of Coulson, where's Cap's biggest fan? Sure, he got his own TV series, but did it cost him his recurring role in all the big Marvel movies? Too bad, because he would have geeked out over all the Easter eggs in this sequel. Captain America the Winter Soldier mines the source material like no other Marvel movie to date. Other classic Cap villains, Crossbones and Batrock, both make appearances, as does Ed freaking Brubaker, one of the greatest Captain America comic book writers of all time, who dreamed up the Winter Soldier in the first place. With all due respect to Stan Lee, it's nice to see another comic book creator recognized for his contribution. But perhaps the sequel's greatest asset is the way it utilizes S.H.I.E.L.D. Yes, in an effort to back up their weakest box office performer to date, The Incredible Hulk doesn't count as that character was rebooted once again with Mark Ruffalo, Marvel Studios has effectively created an Avengers 1.5 movie, which seems to take place in the same universe as that game-changing film, rather than seem like an offshoot, a problem which plagued Iron Man 3 and Thor The Dark World. Familiar faces Nick Fury, Maria Hill, and in a big way, Black Widow, all return. And Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige says this movie is essential viewing to prepare for the Avengers 2 Age of Ultron. Avengers, Avengers, Avengers! Marvel Studios publicity says you don't have to wait until 2015 to return to that universe. And what they have here is so good, they're willing to stack the already greenlit third entry against Batman vs. Superman in 2016. But again, here is where another wildcard element about this movie is being overlooked. Captain America the Winter Soldier is the first Marvel Studios film to be a superhero movie second and another genre first, in this case a political thriller. If this works, the ramifications for the entire comic book movie movement are huge. Yeah, wow, there are a lot of moving parts here. So do they all work together or does this thing come crashing down like that helicarrier? As a longtime comic book reader, I've just never gotten Captain America. He has a very boring personality, uh, in fact, not much of one at all, uh, and his power set just doesn't seem on the same level as his fellow Avengers. He just can't contribute to the team uh, as much. And I think to some degree that is a problem that will always plague him on the page. Uh, perhaps Captain America as a character just can't be conveyed in a static image. But now that I've seen him in his second film, uh, with the advantage of today's special effects in the direction of the Russo brothers, I have to say, I finally see how valuable a super soldier can be. Not just to the Avengers, but to Marvel Studios. Now, some people are saying this is the best Marvel comic book movie ever, and I think that it's certainly one of the best, but I think it's really more of a matter that we haven't seen one in a long time. We haven't seen the kind of movies that have made Marvel what they are today. Uh, namely, the Iron Man films. Uh, I mean, we, we argue over which ones are the better ones, but they're all very, very good. And the Avengers. And so I would say that after kind of, you know, Iron Man 3, I liked it. Uh, a lot of people must have liked it. It made over a billion dollars, but it wasn't as good as we wanted it to be. And then I think Thor The Dark World was uh, a considerable letdown, at, the, at least in um, correlation to our expectations. But Captain America The Winter Soldier is another bullseye for Marvel. It's as good as the Iron Man films and the Avengers films, which is very important for Marvel because it means they have another standalone series which is on par with their crown jewel, Iron Man. 
Uh, I just really enjoyed this film. Now, going in, I'd heard that some people had said this was as much Black Widow's movies as Captain America's. And a number of you, some of you at least, had been like, oh, that's not fair to Cap. Or some of you had been like, oh, I hope so, I love Black Widow. But I have to say, what surprised me about this movie, and the great thing about this movie, is that it's everyone's movie. Every major character gets a chance to shine, uh, which is really commendable, and I think really underscores how much of a team film it is. Uh, everybody holds their own. And I have to also add that this is the most diverse comic book movie in terms of gender and race that I've seen to date, and it's definitely a step in the right direction. I think, of course, there's further to go. Uh, you know, Latino, really, or Asian characters, of course, but it just... It's, it was just really spectacular to watch. Now, speaking of watching the film, uh, the action sequences here are top-notch, top-tier. The Russo brothers, I mean, they must have been practicing or just are big action fans. They don't have this in their repertoire. Uh, so for them to come out of the gate this strong, I, it really makes me interested to see what they're able to, able to do with Captain America 3, which they, they've been signed on for. Uh, the action sequences are just really thrilling, and not just because of the way they're shot, uh, which is quite good, and the way the special effect, uh, the stunt work and the special effects are done. By the way, it seems all very believable. There's only one shot in the film where I was like, oh, that's a, that's a computer. That's not the real actors or even stunt people. That's a computer stuntman. Uh, but not only is well shot and, and you know, well, um, well performed, these action sequences, uh, including hand-to-hand -hand combat and some spectacular car chase sequences, but the score is used to phenomenal effect and also the sound design. Cap's shield, uh, the Winter Soldier's arm, they really, you know, they're, they're, the, way, the sounds that they make are just as integral to, you know, portraying the power behind these weapons as the visuals. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Let me just, I'm just trying to make sure I don't miss anything in my notes here. Uh, so I would also, so the other thing I wanted to say is that, oh yes, the reality of the movie. That's one area where I think this differs from the Avengers. It seems real. Uh, there's real danger. Our characters are in genuine danger. Uh, there's a high body count in this movie. This isn't, this ain't no cartoon. Uh, you know, people don't fall into a canopy or into the water. I mean, some people do fall into the water, uh, but some of them don't come out. Uh, so I really, uh, really appreciated that as well. I think it's important to up the stakes for these films. Uh, that's, you know, this is in between. It's not like the whole, uh, whole scale carnage of Man of Steel, what a lot of people had a problem with. And, uh, it, but it wasn't like, uh, you know, some people argue Marvel's The Avengers, something that didn't bother me. But to be fair, people have countered that really no one seemed to perish in the Battle of New York. This just served to show that the stakes were real here and underline, you know, that speech that you see in the trailer where Cap says, I'm willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. And it shows that that is necessary, it is something that's on the line, and that some people are called to do it. Um, also, uh, it, I think the other thing that makes this movie seem very real is it's ripped from the headlines quality. It deals with uh, issues that are taking place right now, conversations we're having in the real world about security, how, how far is too far to go in terms of, uh, in the name of, you know, protection. Uh, so I thought that was also really commendable. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of heavy dialogue scenes here, but I think to the movie's credit, it never, um, it never bogged itself down that way. Also, the S.H.I.E.L.D. offices were beautiful. And I've never seen so many elevator sequences in a comic book movie. It did remind me, though, of a political thriller. And that's the other point that I want to make. I wish that Thor was as, as strong uh, a fantasy film you know, a fantasy adventure, as Iron Man is a tech techno James Bond, and now that Cap is a political thriller. Uh, I think that Marvel, with both Iron Man and now Captain America, have really clearly defined these characters and what their standalone films are supposed to be, and Thor, I think, is the only one who's really missing that clear definition. And I, it might be because they're not sure how fantasy to go. And I would say, go all the way. Go all fantasy. Uh, as you can see from Cap, uh, it pays off to really commit to the genre that you're in. So I loved it. I loved the Washington, D.C. Uh, background setup. I thought it was really good. Also, speaking of Avengers as a whole, uh, Kevin Feige, as I've reported, has said you need to see this movie to see the Avengers. And I don't think you need to. I'm sure Marvel will make it that you can walk into the Avengers Age of Ultron cold, but you really shouldn't. This movie does change the course of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I will discuss spoilers in my spoiler review, uh, but you do need to see it. I think it will intensely add to your anticipation and enjoyment of the film when it actually arrives. So. 
Don't miss this movie. Go see it. I don't think you need to see it on IMAX or 3D. I saw it on a 2D regular size screen and I had a phenomenal time and at no point was I like, I should have seen this in 3D. I, I, I don't think it was meant, I don't think it was filmed to be seen that way, so I don't think it's necessary. But you know, if, you, if anyone else has seen it in 3D, please write down below if you agree or disagree. So thank you so much for tuning into my review. I can't believe I am to see this, I feel like I'm one of the last people to see this movie, but it really was as good as everyone has said. Uh, and so make sure you don't miss it as well. And when you do see it, I hope that you will then go check out my spoiler review. Or you can, if you've already seen Captain America the Winter Soldier or you don't mind spoilers, you can go check it out right now.